Today's lesson is celebrating the arrival of spring. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger, and I'm Mike. And today we're going to be talking about the arrival of spring. As you know, a couple of days ago was the spring equinox. In which the amount of daylight and the amount of darkness in a day was exactly the same. Yes, indeed, and of course, this is the sign of the end of winter, the beginning of spring, and of course, in a few more months, summer will be here. Time to pack away. Well, maybe not quite yet, but to start thinking of packing away your winter clothes and start thinking of getting your shorts out or your bicycle. All your great outdoor activities begin in the spring and summer, and it's actually interesting because since it is the end of the winter, the end of that dark, cold, slightly frightening. Season, especially for people in ancient times, the beginning of spring was also like a rebirth for the planet. Right, the plants come out, green leaves start to grow on the bare trees, flowers start to bloom, and all sorts of life starts to appear again after many long, cold winter months. So let's look at how the arrival of spring is celebrated in different parts of the world. Let's listen to the first part, and we'll be right back. Celebrating the arrival of spring, the transition from winter to spring signals the arrival of warmer weather. From an astronomical perspective, it's a moment when the sun crosses the Earth's equator, causing day and night to have equivalent lengths. Known as the spring equinox, this moment falls on March 20th this year, and it's celebrated at ancient sites around the world. Hello. 首先，我们来看到名词 transition， 它的意思是转变或是过渡。例如 ，Our transition from producing only cell phone components to tablet and computer parts as well has proven extremely profitable. 事实证明，我们从只生产手机零件转变到也生产平板电脑和电脑零件的利润非常丰厚。又或者说 ，Many students find it tough making the transition from college to full-time employment. 许多学生发现，从大学到全职工作的过渡期很艰难。再来介绍形容词 astronomical， 它的意思是天文学的或是天体的。例如 ，The university is famous for its astronomical studies。那所大学以其天文学研究而闻名。再举一个例子 ，The telescope can detect many distant astronomical bodies。这架望远镜可以探测许多遥远的天文星体。Okay, so here in the first part of our lesson, it says the transition from winter to spring signals the arrival of warmer weather. If you talk about a transition, you're talking about a change, being in one condition or state and changing into another. Sometimes we talk about puberty as being the transition between childhood and adulthood. That's when you're changing from a child into an adult. And you need to make some changes in your life accordingly. Well, here we're talking about the change or the transition from winter to spring, and that indicates or signals the arrival of warmer weather. The warmer weather may not come quite so soon, but、uh, still, it's just around the corner. Absolutely, depends on where you are in the world. But yes, warmer weather will be slowly working its way. Towards you as spring begins. Now let's move out away from the Earth. From an astronomical perspective, it's a moment when the sun crosses the Earth's equator, causing day and night to have equivalent lengths. So there you go. A very scientific explanation for what is happening as our beautiful Earth spins through space on its year-long journey around the sun. So we're not talking about weather in your local area or birds singing and leaves. Growing. No, we're talking about space and the movement of Earth through space, and that's why we refer to astronomy. Astronomy is space science. If you're studying planets, moons, stars, things like that, if you're looking through a telescope up at distant stars in the night sky, you are doing astronomy. And this is the adjective of astronomy: astronomical, astronomical science, astronomical research, astronomical instruments like telescopes. 
anything to do with space science. We should point out we also use astronomical to say really, really big, really, really huge in a very unrelated way. How much was your trip to Paris? It was astronomical. It was the most expensive trip I ever took. I can't believe the prices there. So we can use it in that way. But of course, here we're talking about astronomy, so it's perfectly okay from an astronomical perspective. A perspective is kind of like a point of view. When we look at it from the astronomy world, or as an astronomer would, this is the kind of thing we would say. It's the moment when the sun crosses the Earth's equator. That's the sort of middle of the Earth, the belt of the Earth, as you will, causing day and night to have equivalent or equal length. So that's exactly what's happening in space. We have 12-hour days and 12-hour nights. Right. So, of course, as you know, the Earth is tilted on its axis, and as it goes around the sun, different parts of the Earth face the Earth in different ways. So, of course, during the winter, the northern hemisphere is darker. We have longer nights and shorter days in the winter, whereas in the summer, the days are longer and the nights are shorter. And of course, this all has to do with astronomy, and the axis of the Earth. And in this particular case, though it's very scientific, we've got the spring equinox, and the time of daylight and the time of nighttime are the same. Those different times are the same. They have equivalent lengths. Okay, if something's equivalent, it's the same as something else. For example, I could say this can of soda has the equivalent of five teaspoons of sugar in it. That's a lot of sugar. All yeah, right, sodas so, do have a lot of sugar in them. Yeah, there you go. So this important date that we're talking about, it says known as the spring equinox or equinox. Some people say it that way. This moment falls on March twentieth this year, and it's celebrated at ancient sites around the world. Okay, so yeah, that's what we're talking about. The spring equinox, and I guess is it the fall or the the vernal equinox? Is that the one that happens on September twentieth or twenty first? Well, vernal actually means. Spring. Spring, so oh, okay. vernal so this or is spring the vernal equinox, equinox. Are the same thing. So then they have the autumn equinox. Oh, that's I called guess. the autumnal, autumnal equinox, and that's the one in September, six months from now. Exactly, and that's also a time when the amount of daylight and the、mm. amount of nighttime are the same. And of course, March twentieth is the day in two thousand twenty-four in which this occurs. And、uh, of course, it's celebrated all over the world. And that's what we're going to be talking about in our lesson for today. So, let's go to Malta now in the second part of our lesson and talk about how they celebrate the spring equinox there. Let's listen. One site worth visiting is Menaidra, an ancient temple complex in Malta. Many visitors like to get there before dawn and wait for the rising sun, whose beams shine through the temple's main entrance and straight into its shrine. Another place to celebrate the spring equinox is Stonehenge. On this day, the sun casts its rays over the huge stone slabs, and locals take part in the ancient tradition of welcoming spring through music and dance. But nowhere are the effects of the spring equinox more incredible than at the Temple of Chichen Itza in beautiful Mexico. In the afternoon, as the sun's rays hit the temple's exterior, they form triangles of light and shadow, creating the illusion of an enormous snake creeping down the stairs. This amazing sight is believed to symbolize the descent of the god Kukulkan to connect the heavens and the underworld. 第二部分介绍名词 shrine， 意思是神殿、圣坛或是神龛，例如。At the top of the hill is a small shrine where people go to pray. 在那个山顶上有一间小神殿，人们会去那里祈祷。又或者说 ，A shrine was set up in the house to honor family members who had died. 房子里会设立神龛，是要致敬已故的家人。接着我们看到 illusion 这个名词有错觉、假象或是幻觉的意思。例如 ，Although it looked like the woman on stage disappeared, it was only an illusion. 虽然台上的女子看起来消失了，但这只是错觉。或是 stumbling through the desert, Anna saw far in the distance a pool of clear blue water, but she knew it was an illusion. Anna 蹒跚的穿越沙漠时，看到远方有个清澈湛蓝的水池，但她知道那只是幻觉。再来是动词 creep， 意思是缓慢行进、蹑手蹑脚的移动。我们可以说。
After the lights were turned off, a mouse crept into the kitchen to look for food. 灯被关掉后，一只老鼠悄悄溜进厨房去找食物。再举一个例子 ，Bill crept up behind his sister and then shouted to scare her. Bill 蹑手蹑脚地跟在他妹妹后面，然后大叫吓她。另外，在这个字的字尾加上 y 的话，就会变成 creepy。这个形容词是令人毛骨悚然的，不寒而栗的，或是诡异的意思。例如 ，There is a creepy cemetery behind the church. 那座教堂后面有一个令人毛骨悚然的墓园。或者 ，A creepy guy followed Wendy home from the park. 一个令人发毛的家伙从公园尾随 Wendy 回家。All right, so yes, we're going to be traveling around the world to see a few interesting places. If you ever want to do a fascinating spring equinox tour of the globe, we're going to give you some places you definitely want to check out. And even if it's not the spring equinox, Malta, a tiny little island in the middle of the Mediterranean, would be definitely a place to check out. It's a small island that's now an independent country. It was part of the British Empire, and it has a long and fascinating history. So let's check out what. They do there for this special date in spring. One site worth visiting is Manidra, an ancient temple complex in Malta. They have many temples there. At different times, Malta was controlled by the Greeks, the Romans, the Ottomans, Christian knights. So they do have a lot of history. A lot of old religious buildings would be among some of the old buildings, and this temple complex is definitely a place like that. Many visitors like to get there before dawn. And wait for the rising sun. So you get to there for the rising sun on the spring equinox, whose beams—that's beams or the rays of light from the rising sun—shine through the temple's main entrance and straight into its shrine. Wow, that would be magical, wouldn't it? So you're there at four, five, five thirty in the morning, something like that. The light from the sun goes through the door of the temple, the main entrance, and shines into its shrine. The shrine is sort of like the holiest. Place within a temple or a church or a place like that. It was probably a table or platform of some kind. On it, you might have statues, pictures of gods. You might have some candles and things like that. Some people here in Taiwan might have a little personal family shrine in their home where they do their bye bye and things like that. And of course, any temple will also have a shrine in it, usually in a building right in the center of the temple. So go there and see this magical thing. That's probably Probably been happening for hundreds or even thousands of years in Manidra. Yep. So as you said, a shrine is kind of a holy place, and to me, a shrine is probably smaller than a temple. It's a maybe inside a temple, as you said, or it might actually be a separate structure. You just kind of have to find out what they call it if they're going to call it a temple or a shrine. But indeed, the light will shine straight into the shrine there. That will be quite a sight to see. Another place to celebrate the spring equinox is Stone. Stonehenge. So we're leaving Manidra in Malta, and we're going to England. And of course, in England, we have Stonehenge. And on this day, the sun casts its rays over the huge stone slabs, and locals take part in the ancient tradition of welcoming spring through music and dance. So that's how the spring equinox is celebrated at Stonehenge in England. The sun again casts its rays. The sun shines its rays over those huge stone slabs. A slab is just a really big, thick piece of something, usually stone, but it could also be concrete or wood, and usually it is in the shape of a rectangle. There you go. If you ever seen Stonehenge, you know exactly what we're talking about. Those large standing stones that are built in a circle. Of course, I think a long time ago, although scientists aren't a hundred percent sure. They think that Stonehenge was used as an ancient temple, especially at some of these important times of the year, like the spring equinox. Now, moving on, it says, but nowhere are the effects of the spring equinox more incredible than at the Temple of Chichen Itza in beautiful Mexico. Ah, so we've traveled across the Atlantic Ocean to Mexico. If you can imagine that famous stepped pyramid that you often see in pictures of tourist sites in Mexico, Chichen Itza. Is one of the largest and most visited old temple complexes. Would this be Mayan, Aztec? 
I would assume like it's that. Mayan, yes, Mayan, because probably. it's more toward the uh, Yucatan Peninsula ah, there. Ah, there you go. So one of the ancient cultures of Mexico going back to 3,000 years, something like something that? Something like that, indeed. And, of course, Westerners pronounce this as Chichen Itza, but if you're in Mexico, they'll pronounce it as Chichen Itza. It'll be slightly ah. different. But uh, if you say that in Mexico, they'll probably know what you're referring to. And, yes, go to beautiful Mexico and check out the temple of Chichen Itza, and in the afternoon, as the sun's rays hit the temple's exterior, they form triangles of light and shadow, creating the illusion of an enormous snake creeping down the stairs. Mm. That's quite a long sentence there, so let's break it down a little bit here. In the afternoon, during the spring equinox, the sun's rays will hit the temple's exterior. They will shine on the outside part of the temple and then the light will form triangles of light and shadow. So it's kind of an interesting play with light there. You'll see lots of triangles and of course you'll have shadows there as well. And you'll get this illusion of a really big snake, an enormous snake creeping down the stairs. An illusion is when you see something that really isn't there. We have optical illusions like Remember that drawing of the elephant? It looks like it has four legs if you look at it from the top, but if you look at it from the bottom, it looks like it has five legs. So that is an optical illusion. And here you have the illusion of an enormous snake there. It's not really a snake, but it looks like one. And it's creeping down the stairs. So here the verb to creep just means to move slowly, usually close to the ground. So you got to watch out because sometimes alligators can creep up on you and and they might try to eat you. Absolutely. The animals with a lot of legs or the animals also that move close to the ground, like snakes can creep, cats can creep after a mouse, that kind of thing. So, yeah, this snake image down the side of the steps, it's just kind of a zigzag pattern. Looks like the teeth of a saw or something like that, but it's only seen in all its glory at this special time of year. This amazing sight is believed to symbolize the descent of the god Kulkukan to connect the heavens and the underworld. So, of course, there's a great myth, great story that's been sort of written around this amazing event and around the image of the snake. This amazing site is believed to symbolize the descent of this god to connect the heavens and the underworld. A lot of things that we do in religion are done to symbolize certain things. God can't be there with us, so we do things to sort of represent God. To symbolize something is to represent something in the way that a flag represents represents a country, or the color red can represent stop or danger on many signs. If you see it, you know what you're seeing, even if you're not seeing the actual real thing, you're seeing something that everyone understands takes the place or stands in for that real thing. So it symbolizes the journey of the god from the heavens down to the underworld. Again, many religions, many myths, many folk tales involve gods, you know, traveling between the land of the living and the dead that type of thing. Right, and the heavens, of course, are above us, and the underworld is below us. And, of course, sometimes people think the underworld means hell, but not necessarily. It may not be a very pleasant place. And sometimes, of course, you can work your way out of the underworld and people go down there, they come back, at least according to different religions. But yes, indeed, this is a connection between the heavens and the underworld. And that's what this amazing sight symbolizes or what it represents. It would certainly be a sight to see. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our explanation. Let's wrap things up now by talking about the third part. We'll listen first. Don't let the spring equinox pass you by this year. Head to one of these ancient places and feel at one with nature. pass somebody by 这个片语, a romantic relationship passed Simon by because he didn't have the courage to ask his school crush out. Simon Samantha turned off her phone, so the call passed her by. Samantha passed
All right, we are back with a very short paragraph to wrap things up with. It says, "Don't let the spring equinox pass you by this year." I have to admit, I have let the spring equinox pass me by pretty much every year I've been alive. I mean, I've known about it. I've done something on that day, but nothing to celebrate the spring equinox. Maybe I should go down to the beach and watch the sunrise on March 20th this year. But anyways, yeah, don't let it pass you by this year or next year. If you let something pass Pass you by, it happens, but you didn't participate or take part. So, for example, there might be a big festival or a parade or a holiday in your town. You said, "Oh, I'm going to go to that," and then you got busy. You decided not to go in the end. You let it pass you by. The idea is that you sort of missed out on some great experience. But don't worry, it will probably happen again next year, just like the spring equinox. Or I can always enjoy the summer solstice in June or the autumnal equinox. In September, there are a few other opportunities to celebrate our journey around the sun that we do every year. So head to one of these ancient places and feel at one with nature. Feel at one with the cosmos too, because it's all about how we're traveling through space around the sun on our little, well, big spacecraft here called Earth. So happy spring equinox,、yes. everybody! Happy and, vernal、uh, equinox, indeed. And、uh, we can't、uh, wait until the summer solstice comes in the summer. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen now to Hanny. <music> 各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提到，从冬天到春天的转变，标志着温暖天气的到来。从天文学的角度来看，这是太阳越过地球赤道的时刻，导致白昼和黑夜的长度相等。好，文中他用到 astronomical 来形容天文学的，那它的名词 astronomy 则是指天文学。我们来介绍相关的字根，在古希腊文里。A S T R O N， 这表示复数的星星 ，the stars。那么 A S T E R 表示单数的星星 ，a star。所以呢，带有 A S T R O 和 A S T E R 这两个字根的字，就会跟星星啊、天体有关。好，我们看到在 astronomy 这个字当中，它的字根 A S T R O 表示星星。字尾 n o m y 表示学科，那跟星星有关的学科，应该就不难联想到 astronomy 是指天文学。我们如果把这个字尾 n o m y 把它改成 l o g y， 就会得到 astrology。那这个字尾 l o g y 它表示学说，那跟星星有关的学说，应该也可以联想到 astrology， 它表示占星学、占星术。另外补充一个单字是 constellation，c o n s。Stellation. 好，那它的字根 Stella, S T E L L A， 也是指星星，因为在拉丁文里面，这个 Stella 就是 star， 星星的意思。那它的字首 C O N 表示一起，最后的这个 T I O N 是名词字尾。那我们可以用这种很多星星聚集在一起，去联想到 constellation， 它有星座啊、星群的那种意思。另外，课文用到 equator， 它表示赤道。在讲白昼和黑夜的长度相等时，则有用到 equivalent 来形容相等的、等值的。那它也可以当名词来表达相等、等同。这边我们就来补充它们的相关字根。好，看到 e q u。或者是 I Q U 这一类字根表示 equal 相同相等的意思，用在复合字里面常常会拼成 E Q U I。好，那除了 equal 之外，其他还有像 equation 等式方程式啊 ，equator 赤道等等，它们都含有那种相等均分的语义。现在我们来看看 equivalent 这个字，这字当中的字根 E Q U I 它表示平均的，那么 V A L 表示强力的或者是。价值 e n t 是形容词字尾，那合在一起 equivalent 就表示相等的、等值的。我们也补充两个这类字根的单字，第一个是 adequate， 它的字首 a d e 表示朝向，字根 e q u 是均衡的，那么 a t e 是形容词字尾，朝向均衡那就表示各方都是足够的、适量的，所以这样应该可以联想到 adequate， 它表示足够的、合乎需要的。第二个补充的是 iniquity， 它的字首 i n 表示无 ，i q u 表示同等。
I T Y 是名词字尾，那我们把字首字跟合在一起看，它的字面意思是无同等的、不同等的。那么 iniquity 它就表示邪恶、不公正的意思了。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Transition, a student's transition from junior high school to high school can be a difficult one. Perspective, Amber's travels have influenced her perspective on different cultures and ways of life. Shrine, the ancient temple was a special shrine that drew visitors who sought spiritual guidance. Illusion, the hot air above the desert sand created the illusion of water in the distance. Creep, the cat began to creep slowly towards the mouse. Symbolize, doves are known to symbolize peace and harmony across various cultures and traditions. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See you next time. time.